my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the Tarot Lessons 101. For those of you guys returning, welcome back to my channel, my lovelies. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Well, I hope you have your coffee or tea or drink, whatever you're having, and you're ready to sit back and take in all this information as we continue here on our journey in all its power and strength with the daughter of the lords of the truth, the ruler of the balance, zodiacal trump of Libra, Venus rules, Saturn exalted, the justice, major arcana number 11, a convention of fear, of justice with scales and balances, tree of life path 22. Balance against each thought, its exact opposite for the marriage of these is the annihilation of illusion. Very powerful and strong words to describe the justice card in the major arcana. If we take a step back and analyze what this means, you will come to realize the major power that this card represents. We can go through life seeing things from our point of view or our perspective, just like someone else can go through life seeing things from their own point of view. You can be in the exact place and time that something unfolds where there's more than one or two spectators that see the exact same thing as you are experiencing in that point in time. But everyone having different opinions or points of view or perceptions of what happened. The justice card doesn't focus on what we experience or felt. It's quite the opposite. It is the annihilation of illusion. It is purely based on facts. The reality of things, absolutely nothing to do with emotion. In many decks, the justice card can come up as card number eight or card number 11. And there's many reasons for that, but let's not get into that for now. When I see the justice card come up in a reading, see it as the I am balancing card. Many have always thought that the justice card was a card that had something to do with research. You will quickly find out that it's based on Athena. If you look at the card, there is no water. This is a bit unusual, right? For tarot cards, particularly in the major arcana. What does no water represent? Well, think of it this way. Water is the element that represents emotions. The absence of it strikingly speaks to no emotion. This card is about being critical and impartial. There is no room here for empathy, squishy emotional types. I think I connect very strongly with this card. And those around me have found it a bit difficult to connect with it. But as a person that is non-emotional, that can remain or make decisions from a mental standpoint, will very easily connect with this card. Yes, it can be cold, objective, and very fair. It doesn't care if you had a bad day or if someone bent at your feelings. Everything in this card is even. The balances. The ropes are symmetrical. The pillars are parallel. And the sword. Straight up. Balance is the scales hanging straight down. I have a feeling that she would pull a Solomon without hesitation and cut that baby in half. She will start moving as soon as she makes her decision and will carry it out justly. It's about action. That's why social justice groups are always marching around and making things happen. If they weren't, they'd be called social idea groups otherwise. Don't forget that she's holding a sword. The sword suit is about intellect. It's about the mind. It's about thoughts. If you can imagine that justice is holding the ace of swords, for example, you get an idea of the power, the clarity, and the sudden movement 
of a sword coming down sharp without hesitation. All of that lives in this card. When this comes up in a reading, you have to take all of your emotions out of the decision. You need to make a list of pros and cons to research. Be a brain, not a heart. It can also mean that you're about to get judged. You can't really hide from this one and you can't lie. It's like a judge has a bet on you. It can be unnerving. Relating to cause and effect, karmatic justice and legal matters. Justice represents the consequences of actions. This is the recipient. And as the recipient, you should examine your life and see how past actions have determined your current circumstances and what you can learn from it. Karma is the key thing of justice. Be in the universe is sending the recipe or particular lessons which have to be chosen. And the sooner you learn it, the better. Some key words often associated with the justice card is karma, balance, cause and effect, justice, fairness, truth, responsibility, law, and many more. The justice card is the major arcana, represents all legal matters. This spiritual law of truth, it reminds us to be lawful and fair. It can also represent a legal case, depending on the card surrounding it. We'll speak more in depth of the outcome. Justice is a non-emotional card, like mentioned previously. So make sure you're making to facts in your arguments purely based on non-emotional agendas. Justice reminds us that what goes around often comes back around. So be fair. The pulling of the cloak together in a circle inside of a square, that square represents protection. In order, the circle representing openness and equality. The pillars, like the high priestess and the hierophant, stands between two pillars, becoming the third. There is a veil between the pillars behind. It is the yellow glow of a new dawn symbolizing a new beginning. Justice has been served. And remember, a sword has double edge. Sword symbolizes both favorable and unfavorable consequences. Since it's pointing up, it represents the wall or the cause and effect. As we all are getting ready for battle or conflict, if need be, it also represents responsible action. The sword in her right hand symbolizes the use of the conscious and logical mind. Scales in her left hand represent fair and impartial judgment. Her stance symbolizes the use of intuitive mind in balance with the logical mind. The intuitive mind reflects the logical mind to respond accordingly. A decision that you will make now have long-term results and in all things, each for yourself and others, consequently, come a time where you will be judged. The decision that you have made in the past will carefully be weighed with fairness, of course. Justice is able to use discernment, not from an emotional standpoint, but in the intellect, the facts, the sword being represented as metaphorically being able to cut through illusions, fantasy, or even how others may try to present themselves or come off. It is the ability to cut through the heart of the matter. She is not swayed by illusion or how things may appear at first glance like the high priestess. These are two women that have a veil behind them, speaking towards the guarding of something, the gatekeepers. The high priestess is guarding the spiritual, mystical realm. And justice, well, she seems to be guarding something like truth, justice, balance. It has the ability to rise above polarity. As an example, a situation where there is much drama or many opinions 
could become a sticky situation that goes on. And she can see through all of that, through all of those illusions, see through people's pettiness, spitefulness, or conundrums, and really see things as they are and see the facts without getting caught up in hangups or emotions of people, circumstances, or situations. When you think about it, we are human and human flawed. We get wrapped up in emotions, our beliefs, our loyalties, all have an effect in the decisions that we make on everyday basis. Sometimes we react to certain things in life based on how we've been feeling or when and how we're feeling at that point in time. The justice card represents no time for feelings, no time for citing. It is about looking at the reality based on the facts and making a rational decision. It is about seeking truth and stepping away from biases, viewpoints in your own stories to get to the heart of the matter. The less bias she has, the more empowered she becomes. And we all have biases, but ultimately, that's what stops us from seeing the whole truth. And in that essence, it kind of disempowers us. The secret of justice is the ability to be truly unbiased, which, if you really think about it, has tremendous power. To be able to look at a situation with no attachments, regardless if you're dealing with a partner, with your mother, with your father, with your brother or sisters and friends. They come to you to get advice. Can you really separate yourself from your loyalty that you have towards them, towards that friend, that family member, and be able to provide them or give them an advice that is not in any shape, way, or form tainted from the loyalty, the love, admiration, etc., that you have towards them. If they are in the wrong, it's not such an easy thing or such an easy task. Let's take it up a notch and look at things from a broader perspective. How many times have you made decisions or lack thereof movement or making a decision because you felt like it would impact someone close to you, a friend, a relative or partner? How many opportunities have you in your life let pass you by because you felt that you were stuck or like you didn't want to take that job that was going to be extremely profitable for you because it was in a different city or a different country. And you didn't want to jeopardize the relationship you're in. You had as an example, as an example, these are all decisions that we make based on those around us. And when you're able to look at specific situations unbiased and primarily focusing on the facts, what your decisions have been different? More than likely the answer is yes. It is always easy and without hesitation to express your opinions when you're not emotionally invested in a situation. But things get sticky and difficult when it's about us. Stakes are higher. This is why the justice card teaches us the importance of cause and effect. The actions we take now will be a direct result of our outcome in the future. Like in all our series, there is many of you guys that may connect with this card in many different aspects of your life. Is it a character, personality, or a person in your everyday life that reminds you of the justice card? I think the justice card is very well represented as an example in our everyday life with judges that are in the court system. They are trained for many, many years, not only in the laws and importance of them, but also through experience learning to master their emotions and how to see things from many different perspectives, to not get emotionally invested in the cases that are being presented in the court system, to be able to give unbiased opinion and judgment solely focusing on the facts and proof. How many publicly known cases have we seen out there in the media throughout many years where looking at the situation or following the proceedings, you have made up your mind about who was responsible or at fault. And many could have agreed with you. And out of nowhere, the person who you thought was guilty wins the case when clearly they were guilty, or at least it seemed to be. The judge is making judgments based on what is presented with facts, with proof, 
not hearsay, not emotions, none of that. So when the justice card comes to you, remember balance is important. Rational thinking is important. The key fundamental message in the justice card is to not listen to your heart, but to pay attention to what your mind is telling you, to seeing things from factual standpoint. I hope you guys have learned to understand this card a little bit better. Well, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. And as always, it's been a pleasure and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye-bye. <laughs>